Welcome, dear listener. Today I invite you to join me as we explore a profound narrative, one where the conventional understanding of life and death is turned upside down. Imagine a man, much like any one of us, who passed away only to discover the truths we hold about existence are entirely reversed. In the moments following his departure from the physical realm, this man, let's call him John, found himself not in a realm of eternal rest, but rather in a classroom of sorts. Here, the lessons he began to learn were about the true nature of existence, far different from anything he had known. John learned that what we often consider important in life might not hold the same weight on the other side. We chase after success, accolades, and possessions, believing they define our worth. But in his new reality, John discovered that these pursuits were mere distractions from our true purpose. What if I told you that the real treasures are not material at all, but are found in the connections we make with others, the love we share, and the kindness we spread? As John interacted with other souls in this space, he realized that the emotions and experiences we often shy away from, vulnerability, uncertainty, and even sorrow, are actually the moments where we grow the most. In our world, we avoid discomfort, but what if embracing these feelings is the key to profound personal development? John was shown his life in review, not through the lens of his achievements or failures, but through the quality of his relationships and the depth of his compassion. It makes one wonder, doesn't it? What if the measure of our lives is not in the wealth we accumulate, but in the wealth we distribute in the form of love and kindness? Consider how differently we would live if we understood that every interaction is an opportunity to contribute positively to our collective growth. Each person you meet, each conversation you have, could be a pivotal point not just in your life, but in the cosmic tapestry we are all a part of. Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lesson. John's instructors in this new realm emphasize the power of intention. It's not merely about what we do, but why we do it. The energy and intention behind our actions dictate their impact on the world. So, what if our primary intention was to nurture and uplift others? How would that reshape our daily interactions and our life choices? Now, let's think about the concept of time. In John's new understanding, time was nonlinear. Past, present, and future coexisted, which meant every decision created ripples across time. This revelation can alter our perception of every choice we make. What if your actions today influence not only your current situation, but also echo throughout your entire lifespan, forward and backward? John learned that in the spiritual realm, learning and evolution are continuous, and that ignorance in one area doesn't diminish the soul's value, but rather defines the current stage of its journey. This perspective is liberating. It means that our missteps are not failures, but opportunities for growth. Every challenge is a lesson waiting to be understood, and every difficulty is a stepping stone to greater wisdom. In this narrative, as John moved through his experiences in the afterlife, he was constantly reminded of the interconnectedness of all beings. The illusion of separation between I and you, which so dominates our earthly experiences, faded away, revealing a network of energy and consciousness that binds us all. What if we started seeing every person as an integral part of our own story? How would that change the way we treat each other? As we conclude this first part of our exploration, I leave you with a thought. What if the true purpose of our life is to prepare not for a final resting place, but for an ongoing journey of soulful education and evolution? 
How would that shift your priorities and change your approach to life's challenges? As we continue with John's journey in the spiritual realm, his understanding deepens, and so does ours. He discovers that what we often perceive as reality is just a fraction of a much larger, intricate design. Let's venture further into these revelations and see what else John learns about the true nature of our existence. John was taught that each soul has a unique path and purpose, intricately designed to foster growth, not only for themselves, but for the collective consciousness. Imagine if each of us truly understood and embraced our unique roles. How much more harmoniously could we exist together? Each person you encounter is experiencing their own journey of enlightenment, each with lessons to learn and gifts to offer. In this new realm, John came to understand the concept of soul families, groups of beings bound together by shared lessons and mutual spiritual growth. These connections transcend time and physical presence, suggesting that the relationships we form are not random, but are rather predestined paths intended to help us evolve. What if the people in your life, even those who challenge you the most, are actually your greatest teachers in disguise? John also learned about the power of forgiveness. In the spiritual realm, forgiveness is not just a moral virtue, but a necessary act to free oneself from the chains of past grievances. This act of letting go is seen as essential for spiritual advancement. Think about it. What grudges or regrets are you holding on to that might be holding you back from true peace and progress? As John delved deeper, he was shown the impact of thoughts and emotions on our spiritual and physical health. Thoughts and emotions emit vibrations that affect not only the individual, but also the world around them. What if we became more aware of our inner dialogues and emotional responses? How might our personal health and our relationships change if we consciously chose to foster positivity and resilience? The concept of karma was also revisited. In this new understanding, karma is not a punitive system, but a feedback mechanism that helps guide souls toward better choices and higher states of consciousness. This means every action we take sends out a wave, and the quality of that wave determines what comes back to us. How might this knowledge change the way you act in daily life? John was fascinated by how the spiritual realm placed such emphasis on the present moment. Unlike the earthly perception where past and future dominate our thoughts and fears, here, the present is the focal point of power and creation. What if we truly lived in the moment, fully engaged with the here and now? How much more vibrant and fulfilling could our lives be? As he continued his journey, John encountered the concept of life as a mirror. Our external circumstances, he was taught, reflect our internal state. If we see chaos outside of us, it's a prompt to find and heal the chaos within. This perspective shifts responsibility back to us, empowering us to change our lives from the inside out. What changes might you make within yourself that could transform your external world? John also learned about the illusion of death. In the spiritual realm, death is not an end but a transition, a mere change in the state of being. This understanding removes the fear associated with death and encourages a fuller, more courageous approach to life. If you weren't afraid of the end, how differently would you live your life? Each of these lessons brought John closer to a universal truth. We are all part of a divine, interconnected whole with each of us playing an integral role in the vast cosmic play. As we prepare to move into the next part of our journey, consider how the notion of interconnectedness might influence your interactions with the world around you. John's journey is far from over, and as we accompany him deeper into the mysteries of existence, let's keep our minds open to the profound shifts in perspective that await us.
How might these new understandings reframe your approach to the challenges and opportunities in your own life? Let's explore further in the next part of our narrative. As John's spiritual journey unfolds further, he delves into deeper layers of understanding about life's true essence and the universe's intricate design. Let's continue to walk alongside him as his revelations offer us new perspectives on how to live more fully and consciously. John discovered that every soul has a specific frequency, much like a unique signature that influences its path and interactions. This frequency is shaped by thoughts, actions, and spiritual maturity. What if you could tune into and refine your own frequency? Imagine the clarity and purpose you could bring into your life by aligning more closely with your true spiritual signature. In this realm, John learned about the concept of life scripts. Each of us comes into the physical world with a script, a set of potential events and encounters designed to help us learn specific lessons. However, we have the freedom to choose how we respond to these events, which can alter the script in significant ways. What if the challenges you face are not obstacles, but opportunities specifically designed for you to overcome and learn from? John was also introduced to the idea of multidimensional existence. He found that his soul existed simultaneously across different realms and dimensions, each aspect of himself learning and evolving in its own right. This complex view of existence suggests that we are far more than just our physical bodies and earthly identities. How would this understanding change your view of your own life and the decisions you make? He learned that the spiritual realm values experience over outcomes. While we often focus on achieving goals and measuring success by external standards, the spiritual teachers explain that the true value lies in the experience itself, the growth, knowledge, and wisdom gained. How might shifting your focus from outcomes to experiences enrich your life and bring you more fulfillment? John also explored the power of unconditional love. This love is seen as the most potent force in the universe, capable of transforming lives and healing wounds. It is love without conditions, expectations, or boundaries. What if you practiced unconditional love, starting with yourself and extending to others? How might this shift in perspective impact your relationships and sense of peace? As he continued his education, John was taught the importance of balance between giving and receiving. Both are necessary for the health of the soul, and imbalance can lead to spiritual and emotional blockages. This balance is crucial, not just in personal relationships, but in our interaction with the world. How can you create more balance in your life between giving to others and receiving what you need? John also encountered the principle of gratitude. Gratitude was shown to elevate one's vibrational frequency and open the heart, fostering an environment where miracles and synchronicities are more likely to occur. What if you made it a daily practice to find things to be grateful for, even in challenging circumstances? The spiritual teachers emphasize the importance of integrity and authenticity. They taught John that being true to oneself is essential for spiritual advancement. Every decision and action should reflect one's true self, not the self that one thinks should be presented to the world. How often do you find yourself wearing masks, and what might change if you chose to live more authentically? Finally, John learned about the cycle of spiritual rebirth. This process involves the soul repeatedly entering the physical world to refine its understanding and evolve toward higher consciousness. This cyclical view of existence suggests that our current life is just one chapter in a long and rich story. What lessons might you be carrying forward from past lives, and what might you be preparing for in future incarnations? As we prepare to move into the final part of our journey with John, Let's reflect on how these teachings might be applied to our daily lives. How can we integrate these spiritual insights to not only enhance our personal growth, 
but also contribute to the collective elevation of consciousness. In this final part of our journey with John, we reach the culmination of his spiritual revelations, where each lesson converges to offer a comprehensive understanding of life's profound truths. Let's continue to absorb these insights, allowing them to resonate and potentially transform our own perspectives and actions. John discovered the importance of conscious co-creation. In the spiritual realm, he learned that souls actively participate in shaping their realities, both individually and collectively, through their thoughts, intentions, and emotional energies. What if you recognized yourself as a powerful co-creator of your own life? How would you choose to shape your reality if you truly believed your thoughts and intentions had the power to influence it? He was taught the concept of spiritual ecology, the interconnectedness of all life, and the responsibility each being has to maintain the harmony and balance of the whole. This extends beyond environmental concerns to include the energetic health of our world. How can you contribute to the spiritual and physical ecology of your environment? What actions can you take to ensure you're a positive force within this intricate web of life? John also learned about the illusion of separation. On Earth, we often feel isolated, separate not only from each other, but from the divine. In the spiritual realm, however, John discovered that this separation is a mere illusion, a construct of physical reality that dissolves upon deeper spiritual realization. What if you lived every day with the awareness that you are intrinsically connected to every other being and to the divine? How would this shift your interactions and your feelings of loneliness or disconnection? One of the most profound lessons John encountered was the nature of divine timing. Unlike earthly timing, which is linear and fixed, divine timing is fluid and perfect ensuring that events unfold exactly when and how they should for the greatest growth of all involved. How might your stress and anxiety about timing change if you trusted in the perfection of divine timing? John also explored the transformative power of surrender. In his spiritual studies, he learned that surrender is not about giving up, but about trusting deeply in the flow of life. It involves letting go of our tight grip on control and allowing the universe to lead the way. What areas of your life might benefit from this kind of surrender? What might happen if you let go of the reins and trusted the journey? The spiritual realm also emphasized the significance of inner peace. John learned that inner peace is the foundation from which all positive change and spiritual growth can emerge. It is not merely the absence of conflict, but a profound state of harmony with the universe. How can you cultivate a deeper sense of inner peace within yourself? What practices or changes might help you nurture this essential quality? Finally, John was shown the ultimate lesson of his journey. The purpose of life is not just to seek happiness and avoid suffering, but to evolve in consciousness and love. Each experience, whether perceived as good or bad, is part of this evolutionary process. What if you viewed every experience as an opportunity to evolve, to expand your understanding and capacity for love? As we conclude our time with John and his spiritual journey, it's important to reflect on how these lessons might be integrated into our daily lives. How can we live more consciously, more intentionally, and more compassionately? How can we embrace our roles as co-creators, stewards, and integral parts of a greater whole? John's journey through the spiritual realm teaches us that life is not merely about survival or achievement, but about learning, growing, and evolving in love. As you move forward from this narrative, consider how you can apply these insights to your own life creating a journey that is not only fulfilling for you, but also beneficial for the world around you.